In today's episode, we're actually going to talk about driving technique. Race drivers, it's Enzo with the Race Driver Coach Show. And yeah, we're going to talk about driving technique this time. Now, it's called the Race Driver Coach Show. And I hardly ever talk about race driving, actually in the cockpit, what you do, how you drive these particular corners, how you brake. And I've ignored it on purpose. I've shied away from the topic because I'm more into personal performance. I mean, don't get me wrong. I do teach drivers how to drive faster. And since the 90s, I've been in the debrief room with all my drivers, especially the ones I go to the track with. And we look at the data, we compare data, we come up with a plan of how to drive a certain corner a better way. So I've seen it all, obviously, and I had some top drivers. You know, I've been uh, sharing a team with Max Verstappen, Jules Bianchi, and all the drivers that I work with. So I get to see their data. I get to see how they actually drive and the differences between them and their teammates. So I've learned a lot, obviously, but I don't really talk about it because there's too many variables. Now, if you go on the internet, you can see all these different uh, documents, videos, diagrams of how to drive particular corners. You've got a hairpin. This is how you, you drive the racing line. This is where you should brake. These are the principles. But they're all too basic, and they don't fit every single hairpin. So you say, right, this, in theory, is how you should drive a hairpin, which is great. But then you go to places like uh, Brands Hatch, where turn two, Druids, is a hairpin, but you don't take the normal hairpin line. Most people say, break in a straight line, if it's a right-hander, right? Right-hand hairpin. Break in a straight line, full left, so you're on the white line. You break, you get to the end of the break, and you bleed off the break, and you turn in, but don't turn in too early because the corner's too long. However, brands hatch, turn two, you go under the bridge, and because it's it's design it's camber it's at the top of a hill you just fire it in tight you don't do the classic hairpin line so these people that teach you you know god bless them they mean well and they're, they're correct on a lot of things but they teach you these bog standard textbook ways of driving it's not like that in the real world in the real world you do have these basics and un basic understandings about how to drive different types of corners, right? High speed, combination, medium speed, slow speed, light hairpins. And you have that programmed. Fine. This is what technically you should do. But in real life, you look at the tarmac. You look at the different types of curbs, the camber, the way you approach, how fast you approach it, the angle you're coming off the corner before. The type of car you've got, if it rotates really well, you take a different race line, believe it or not, to one that's got understeer or oversteer or just doesn't do what you want it to do. There's so many things that change it. So I've never really wanted to say this is how you drive because it will be proven wrong and it depends on the, tr the corner. So that's why, <laughs> basically, and I don't really want to give away certain little specific secrets of my current clients as well. Um, which there isn't many, by the way, but it's just these tiny things that they might do that they don't want anyone else to know. So I've kept away from the subject. But last time, uh, the last video I did last week, I got a comment from Ali and he simply said, thank you, Enzo, for all these tips. Is it possible for you to cover some driving techniques such as braking? And I was going to say this reason, what I've just said now is why I don't do it. But I am going to do it today and I want to do it in a way that allows you to become the expert not to say you should break this particular way you should turn here uh, a certain point and you, this is what you do through a corner because again it will be dependent on the car the track and everything else so i want to give you an overall philosophy that helps you become the expert and this is what one of the things i notice when you're with great drivers again they have this pre-programmed way of driving but they problem solve better. As they're approaching a corner, they know what the most important thing about that corner is. How to maximize their performance through a specific corner that's coming. It's like an overall belief, if you like, about that corner that's coming, and they execute on that. That's what I want you to do. 
So there is all different types of corners. So what I've done to make this really easy to understand, it's not going to be easy if you're listening to this on a podcast, by the way. This is for if you're watching the video. So if you are on the podcast, you normally listen that way. Tune into YouTube and watch it. And so you can see exactly what I'm teaching because I'm going to use iRacing and a few screenshots that show what I'm trying to communicate here. So let's get into this. I want you to remember this term, corner philosophy. That basically means it's the guiding principle for a corner. So if you're approaching a corner, there's going to be a certain major rule for it, for you to be quick in that corner. For example, we're going to be using on in this video, the Red Bull ring. And that's because it's got certain types of corners that bring across my point. So you'll see turn one. I'm going to zoom into turn one now. Flip her around a little bit. Turn one looks like a normal 90 degree corner, kind of 90 degree corner. Now, the guiding philosophy or the principle for this corner is that it's got a super long straight afterwards. So you would say, as you're approaching it, the most important thing about this corner is the exit. That's its philosophy. So as a driver, as you're approaching it, remember, it, it's easy to look at the screen or, or a corner in this way in the helicopter view. But when you're approaching it, you're seeing it from this angle, the kind of angle where you're just sat in a cockpit. You're looking through the little letterbox of your helmet visor. You maybe you've got a halo bar in the way, but it looks different. And when you're in that circumstance, that situation, which you're always going to be right, you sat there in the seat. When you see it from that perspective, it's so easy for you to think, right, I'm starting a new lap because this is turn one, right? A Red Bull ring. I'm starting a new lap. I know I've got to find like half a second or whatever it is. I'm going to push the brake in. I'm going to go harder in and try and make up time on the entry. That is somebody who... If it's a type of corner where you do that and hasn't got much of an exit, fine. But if there's an overall corner philosophy of the most important thing about this corner is the exit. And that's what a top driver's remembering. And a lot of drivers that are a good level, F2, F3, F4 drivers, good ones, they're all keeping very strict to the principle. I can't lose the exit. And when I say that, it means I must be early to full throttle. So I can keep braking as late as I can and keep pushing the braking area. But as soon as I start to get late on the throttle and losing the power coming off and going down the straight and losing time all the way down the straight, I'm going to start losing lap time. So this is where you've got to be really strict and disciplined on yourself. I'm searching for lap time, but in a corner like this, I'm going to reframe from braking too late because I need to get the exit. There's absolutely no point in being the champion on the way in and being, being the loser for the next one kilometer after. Because all you'll do is you'll make one tenth up on the way in, but then you'll lose two, three tenths all the way down the straight after. And that's what I see most drivers doing. They get so carried away and distracted by chasing the lap time, they forget the most important thing about this corner that's coming up right now. And if we're talking about Red Bull Ring, it's pretty similar. So the turn two is very similar to what we see at turn one. Bring it down, flip it around. It's also got a stupidly long exit. So you break as late as you can, obviously, fine, but you need to get on that power. And it's a bit different here. Like, like I say, this corner has got such a camber change on the apex to exit that you can't just drive the normal templated brake on the left apex here because it's got a crest as you're coming off and if you're in a real world drive especially it's got a crest coming off the apex so you've got lock in right you still got wheel lock in as you as you get into the apex and coming off the apex and it causes wheel spin so that needs quite a funky line at turn two so again it's the philosophy i need a good exit however this corner has got camber in the middle of it so i'm gonna have to plan for that i'm gonna have to try and hit that that crest should I say not just camber it's crest i need to hit that as straight as i possibly can so again these templated this is how you take a right under right hand corner uh right angled corner uh a hairpin it doesn't wash each corner is different it's up to you as the driver before you get there if you've never been there before to understand this about all corners that you go to as we come down to i call that turn two but it's actually turn three sorry so as you come down to turn four 
similar again got along straight after so you're breaking as deep as you can but now it's downhill so your breaking point changes then we've got turn six and seven turn six and seven are high speed this one the first one six is off camber when you get sort of like the apex so you've got a plan for that but it's uh it's medium to high speed and then same for this one this one's cambered for you which is nice positive camber and it's also got a long straight after so it's a guiding principle everywhere around here this is minimum speed but you don't want to lose to the exit for the last corner so you look at the you look at the whole track and you kind of get an idea for what's most important and that really is summing it all down to be as simple as i can so when you're talking about driving technique you first have to start off with the corner philosophy Otherwise, you're going to be trying to break deep, harder, thinking about breaking shapes and all this without thinking about, OK, I've just seen my my the data from my teammates. I can see their break shape. Now, for hairpins and, th and corners that are slow in a single seater car, typically your break shape is a big hit at the beginning. The initial is a big hit. And then you bleed off as you go towards the corner, because if you start to break slow, you lock up near the end of the braking once the downforce is off. So you really need to hit it hard. Just with most downforce cars, the, the F4 is a little bit softer nowadays because it locks up so easy. But before you get into that kind of technical talk, you need to understand how each corner needs to be driven in the dry, in the wet. If the wind's behind you, what's going to happen then? So it, it, it does take prep. So before you go to a track, you've got to get very clear on all these things before you're testing or before you're racing there. Do your research, do a prep day, do simulator work, anything you can to get the corner philosophies and the principles in mind to know what's what each corner needs from you as a driver and what it needs from the car because the car setup might not be good for these certain corners. So you have to play with that as well. So there's a lot to take in, but overall, What's the philosophy for each corner? Just get clear on it. Now, to jump to iRacing, I did some laps today just before this to make uh, to make my point again at Red Bull Ring in the F1 car. And I'm going to show you some screenshots and videos. And it's it's first of all, it's me driving fairly correct. I just did like five laps, so it's not really that fast, but fairly correct with the philosophy in my head for each corner. And then I started to, on purpose, chase time like a lot of drivers do and that means breaking later and just to see how much it hurts if and i can show you on data then actually a data trace of what this means here it is so i'm going to show you two on boards the first one is me driving more correct the second time i'm going to show you at me over driving the entries and losing the exits so i'm going to show you from two different angles so take a watch here's the first one And now this is me overdriving the entry. And you can't see much difference, can you? Even from the helicopter view, you still see the car go through. And the, both videos, again, the first one is driving correctly-ish. And the other one is overdriving the entry. Not much difference. However, if you go to data, then you can see what's happening. So we've got two traces. Anything that's colorful is the quick lap. So you can see the purple speed trace. You can see the throttle is green on the fast lap and the colorful brake shape is orange. Anything that's white is the lap after when I started to push hard, overdrive the entries. And as you can see, going into turn one, I break just a bit later, like a few meters later, which is good because it means I'm winning all the way in. The white one is faster, faster, faster until this point, the white one starts to go slower because he can't or I can't get back on the throttle. And I can't get on the throttle, which makes me lose all the way down the straight. So that tiny little bit I made on the entry loses me all the way down the straight. That is a pure example of somebody forgetting the philosophy of the corner and trying to chase the entry. So the brake shape might look good and all this, but you just slowed the car down way too late in the corner so then you can't back, go back to the throttle and something to really remember after philosophies and all this is ask yourself where does the minimum speed need to come this confuses people a lot but where you have the car at the slowest it has been in the corner that's the minimum speed 
And if you have a minimum speed that's way too early in a corner and there's loads of corner left, you have to wait to get on the throw, right? So you break too early and now there's loads of corner left. So you're sort of like waiting. You can't really do anything. You're in limbo. That means your minimum speed is too early. Now, if you go in too deep, and if I go back to the data now, you can see again that white line's gone in too deep. So my minimum speed here is really late. It's over there where the purple one, the minimum speed's just that bit earlier. So the car's ready, settled, ready to pounce on the throttle. This is an absolute almighty error and problem and mistake that a lot of drivers make. And I'm, not, I'm talking about every level, F1, F2, F3, you name it, every single category, drivers often forget. And I'm not talking about the philosophy of the corner. They know what to do in the corner. They often forget the importance of where the minimum speed needs to be in the corner. And they get that wrong when they start chasing the lap time as well. And it just they completely forget and they look in the data and they're like, ah, I've done it again. Don't do the same. And this isn't just for slow corners with important exits. It's also for medium and high speed. So going to turn seven of Red Bull Ring now, just quickly to finish off, I want to show you where minimum speed is important in these types of corners as well. In fact, we'll do six and seven. So going into six now, you can see this is the correct way of driving in nice and keeping good speed throughout. And then an early lift and back to throttle early as well. So an early minimum for that one. Then the second lap, chasing the lap time a little bit more i stopped going a little bit faster and now i can't get on the throttle until about now so it's hurting and this time i'm going quicker here but now i'm lifting and now back on the power and you'll see this on the data again with the correct the more correct lapping colors purple on the speed trace here and, and white being when i'm pushing i'm going into that first left really late and deep and pushing loads in so it's really good going in big champion but then i lose coming out because there's not so much an exit, it doesn't matter too much. I'm only marginally losing on the white. But then going into turn seven, the second left-hander, I try and take him more again. And what happens, look, as you can see on the throttle trace, I lift much later, but then I'm off for longer later. And I can't get back on the throttle till my quick guy, when I did it fast, has been on the full throttle for some time. So then it loses all the way down. And even when I'm really trying to take the mick out of this, and the white one now is trying to take turn seven, the second left, completely flat out with a tiny little lift, actually. It's great. It wins. It wins. But then I have to have another lift late on because I'm just going too quick and I'm going to win to steer off. And even being that cocky, arriving slower, but being that cocky, it loses me down the straight. So my minimum, again, is coming way too late. So you need to know where your minimums are. Through the slow speed, through the high speed, like Cops Corner in a certain car, you need to just do a, a slight lift for Cops Corner and then back on. And that lift, if you do it earlier, but you're back to throttle earlier, full throttle earlier, it wins. Rather than someone just going in as late as they can, doing a late lift and then trying to get back on the throttle. So remember that, it's a driving technique. So... Two main areas I covered today. Obviously, these I could talk forever on these subjects. And if you if you like this video and you want me to talk more about these things, then fine. Just what specific things do you want me to talk about? Let me know and I'll do it. But overall, know the, the disciplines and the philosophies for each corner, the non-negotiables, what's important about that corner, and also know where the minimum speed needs to come. So you don't find yourself slowing too early or too late. And as you get good at this, you're kind of going into a corner, carrying, you want to take the minimum speed later. You've been told, take it around the corner more, which means take a little bit more speed in. So you're keeping, if it's a right hander, you're keeping the front left wheel tire loaded as you're going in. And you're like, yeah, I can feel the speed coming off. And then as you're ready, you go. And you have that sensation, try it on the sim, on iRacing or whatever. You have that sensation and feeling of taking the minimum later. And it's amazing. You start to say, oh, okay, it's like a piece of string. So I, I, I give on the entry and then I take on the exit. And then you start to know what works. And this is what you've got to do on the go. That's what the good drivers are. They know the philosophy. They know where the minimum speed is. But then they're trying to play with it. If I just go a bit deeper, does it hurt me on the exit? Mm, I think it did. And with Delta on iRacing, you can see if it works, right? If you could losing down the straight after. So become more curious on this side because then your driving technique will come from that if you just go into the next race that you do just thinking of these things planning this way you're going to improve and also mentally you're giving your mind something to focus on in a corner 
and you understand if it's feeling right or not, rather than thinking about the lap time and seeing the delta. It's now, did it feel right? Do I feel like the minimum was in the right place and the car was allowing me to get to the back to the throttle in a good time? This is all what a driver, top driver, any driver has to do on the go.